Hello, today we're gonna build a shopping cart. So this is gonna be the first in a series of several videos. In uh, this video, I'm gonna walk you through the scope of the project, show you the underlying source code and uh, what we're working with. In the next video, I'll show you how to add things to a shopping cart. In the video after that, I will show you how to display the shopping cart in the video after that, I will show you how to update quantities in the cart, which is the kind of thing you would do at a checkout page, which is the same thing as displaying a cart. And uh, that's going to be the scope of the project. Some videos are going to be longer than others. I mentioned that right up front because if you just want to get straight into adding things to your cart, which is, I could see you wanting to do that, that's going to be the next video. So go ahead and check that out. I bet you that would be in like the recommended videos or something off to the right. So in this video, uh, I'm going to explain to you what we're working with. Now, while this is not exciting, it's surely going to be the least exciting video in the uh, series, it's also kind of the most important. The code that you write is relative to the project that you're working on, and so uh, here's what I've got. So I've got this, uh, it's a shopping site, and I've got these fictional products here. Here's a product, here's a product, here's a product. Now, generally speaking, when you're building a shopping cart, I would say it'd be more likely that you would display these items just as like a link to a details page. And then on that details page, there would probably be a description and, uh, you know, all kinds of granular information about the product. And that's generally speaking where you add it. Here, I'm just trying to minimize the pages in this project. So I've just created this. This is like the catalog of products and there's no details page. You can just, you can buy this one here. 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 And I know that I can't really think of many places that are actually set up like that, but it's going to save us from having one extra page in this project. So that's how this is going to work. Um, at some point, we'll head over to view cart, but that's not where we're at right now. Let me show you the underlying source code that I'm starting with. All right. So this is not going to be a whole lot of fun to look at. Oh, I didn't mean to have all that there. So I we'll get rid of it. That's what I'm going to build here today. All right, so here I've got a connect script and here's a create table script just so that the all those products that you saw there on that page, those are all getting pulled from a database. That's the important thing to understand here. You don't, I mean, it's entirely possible that it, within a minute of, or so of, of this moment that you'll understand exactly how this thing works. So I'm creating a table. I'm just select one from products. That table is called products. Um, so either that table is full of all these products already, or it's not. If it's not full of all these products, then this is going to fetch like an empty set. And then this if is going to evaluate to false or, uh, empty set means it's going to evaluate to true because there's a not in front of it. So if, if this table is empty, then it's going to do this insert. If this table is not empty, then it's not going to do this insert. So this is just me pre-populating the table so I don't have to do that manually. Uh, so this is going to run one time. Here is a secondary query, right? So my first one is just kind of see what's in the table. Here, like there's no way you could get to line 27 and not have a full table, right? Either the table was populated here or it wasn't, but it is populated. So I'm querying that table here. I'm selecting everything from products, storing that result as some variable called result, which I access down further in the project. So I'll show you what I do with result. So result is in this big while loop down here. So you notice, see that syntax or the keyword highlighting? Um, so while, and then so this is how you iterate through a set. I mean, you can iterate through a set a lot of ways, but this is how I iterate through a set of results, which I got through MySQLi. So I'm declaring and assigning this variable called row, which represents the current row I'm looking at from that query, which was select star from products. So I'm fetching an associative array from result and I'm storing it as row. Each trip through this loop creates a row, right? You remember the products, each one was a row. And each one of those was uh, one, two, three, I don't know, it looks like three TDs. Yeah, so three TDs is what it was. So the first TD, would, and TD, if you don't know about TD, that's just a cell in a table. So there was like a, there was a name of the product and an image. The second row had the price. 
the third row actually had a form. So this is actually worth looking at here. So notice each row in the table uh, contains three cells and the third cell contains a full form. Each form was relative to the product that you would be adding to your cart. Right, so the action of the form is, is, is the form, it's, it's this current page. There is a, so each uh, product has a quantity, right? That was that thing where you would say, I wanna buy seven of this or six of this or two of this. Each one of them had a PID that corresponds to the primary key in the table. So everything in a table has a unique identifier. That is the unique identifier. And then there's a submit button. So when you press submit, it passes the quantity and the ID, and that's what we're going to need to generate our cart. Now, one more thing that I want to point out here is that this uh, ID is actually a hidden field. I mentioned that because a lot of people aren't too familiar with hidden fields. So text is the normal text box, right? Like submit is a submit button. Hidden means it's not going to display on the form, uh, but it is a piece of data that we need to pass. And you betcha, we definitely need to pass the ID of the product, otherwise we wouldn't know what you're buying. So that is a hidden field. So it's going to get passed, but uh, you're not going to see it. So now that you've seen how that table is dynamically generated, let me show you what it looks like again, right? So there's a row, there's a form, there's a row, there's a form. So none of that, I mean, it's entirely possible, it's entirely likely that your project won't look like this, but I just want to show you where everything's coming from. So there's a form, there's a couple fields, and then uh, in the next video, we'll initialize our cart. I don't think I said I was going to do that in the, you know, when I said what we were going to do, but we'll do that, and that'll be a short video. So uh, now that you understand what this project looks like, uh, we're ready to start writing some PHP and start working with sessions so we can build ourselves a functional shopping cart. Thanks for watching.